Okay, now we're gonna move on to the other side of the family, okay, that is called the geometric series or the geometric progression away from the arithmetic, okay? Um, yeah, it's geometric sequence is a bit difficult to analyze. However, once you got the, the certain definitions or the certain derivations, proofs of the formulas, okay, you should be on your way. Okay, so the geometric sequence is defined by this function. A n is equal to a, okay, multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1, okay? Now, r is what we call the common ratio. Okay, common ratio. Unlike the common difference, which is on the arithmetic side, this one is called common ratio, and r cannot be equals to zero or one. Okay, why is that so? If r is equals to zero, we just we won't get any terms. If r is equals to one, we simply get a. Okay, not much of a common ratio for that. Okay, and a is just a constant. Okay, so this is the function of a geometric sequence. Now, I would like to visualize it by let's just say we are along the sequence like that. Okay, the numbers are related by the factor of r, okay, which I say again is the common ratio. So to get from this to this, we will just multiply by r. To get from here to here, we will multiply by r, okay? In this way that will help you visualize it, it's good because it, in fact it helps me. Okay, to get from the first term to say the third term, we multiply by r squared, okay? r times r, okay? And this also is confirmed when we use the function. So the first term is basically 1 take away 1 is 0. So we got the first term is a, okay? Then we got a2 is basically a r, and we got a3 is equals to a r squared, okay? So when we go from the first term to the second term, we multiply by r. When we go from the second term to the third term, we multiply by r also like, like so, okay? So the geometric sequence is defined like this, okay? So now, when we already have the sequence, most logically, we want to proceed to find the series, right? Okay, now I must say that the series of a geometric See, or a geometric progression, the series, or the sum up to a geometric progression, is not that easy to derive. However, you know, it has a really nice form if we are able to derive it, okay? It has a really nice and neat form. Okay, so we have the function, okay, I put an, the function is an is equal to a r to the power of n minus 1, okay? So, the remember, what is the series, okay, or the sum up to the n term is basically, we want to put a value of n, an integer, let's just say 5, we want to sum up the terms up to the fifth term, okay? So we want to sum up all up to the fifth term. Now we can substitute the values, but we really want a neat way relating the common ratio, relating the first term a, and relating n, okay? So let's just try to do that. Now, uh, one way to start is that I can write out the, the, the series, okay? So sum to the n term is basically a plus a r, okay, related by the common ratio, plus a r squared, okay, plus all the way to a r n minus one. Okay, I hope we can see that. Now, now we, we need to somehow try to deal with this problem because there's a there's a ellipsis over here, okay? Which if I'm not wrong, is a term to say that you know we truncate a lot of values. So it's quite difficult to do any sort of algebra manipulation at the moment. However, much like how I derived the arithmetic progression, what we can attempt to do is that we can try to find another series, okay, that allows us to match up the terms at the top and the terms at the bottom, okay so that we can remove the truncation, okay? And a way of doing that is somehow matching up the terms so that they become similar or they become the same, okay? So let's just look at, look at it this way, okay? Why not our times r by s n, okay? Why do I want to do that? Because I want to do that so that I will write an a r over here. r times r, I get a r, right? Well, it somehow turns out that this a r kind of is the same as the a r over here, it's the same quantity. Now, when I do it again, r times a r is giving me a r squared and a r3. Okay, so I just keep on going, going, and going on. Now, plus all the way to r to the power of n minus 1 times r is r to the power of n, okay, a. However, I need to write the term preceding that. What is the term preceding that? Well, it's a r n minus 1, okay? The term preceding this is n minus 2, so I would multiply by r, okay? Yeah, sorry, n minus 2, so I multiply by r to get n minus 1. I will just add up, you know, the power. Now, once I have this, I got my two series, okay, and I see that this matches up with this quite neatly. It's the same. This matches up with this, this matches up with this, okay, and likewise, this matches up with this. So, I will want to eliminate them, and what I write is that I'll write Sn take away r s n. I'm just subtracting this from this so that I can subtract all these terms which are the same from the series at the top, right? Very nice. Okay, so this subtract, this cancel, 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 this cancels out with this. So all I'm left with is this minus a r to the power of n. 
and to bring up the A, I get A minus R in this. Okay, so basically this, but I'm not done yet. I will just basically factor out the SN equals to A one take away RN divided by one take away R. Okay, and that is that nice and neat form I have of the summation of a geometric series up to the n term. So basically what I want to find, let's just say I want to find the fifth term, okay? So I want to find the fifth term, so I'll just basically let n equals to five, put in the common ratio, put in the first term, and there we go, I already got it, okay? Now, another interesting point to note, okay? A special case of the geometric series, okay? If magnitude of r is less than one, something interesting happens, okay? As n tends towards infinity, what can we tell about the term over here, okay? R n tends towards zero, okay? So let's have to think about it. R, vector of R is less than one, right? So if we got a number less than one, we multiply it by itself, which we multiply by a number less than one, it keeps on decreasing, okay? And it decreases up to the point where R n is equal to zero. So what I can write is that S n is equal to, this becomes zero, I got A divided by one take away R, okay? S n tends towards infinity, okay, provided this is true. This tells us that if we have a common ratio, okay, and the common ratio is the magnitude is less than 1, and we, wanna, we, we have infinite terms, okay, so n tends towards infinity, we really find the whole sequence, okay, we find all the terms. However, even though we have an infinitely amount of terms as n tends towards infinity, there is certainly of still a value of the sum, then we can get a finite sum, and the finite sum is given by this. This is what this statement tells us. Let me give you a very easy example, okay? S, okay, n is equals to one. Let's just say the first term is a, okay? The first term is a, so, sorry, the first term is one, okay? And the common ratio, I'll make it half, okay? Half. So basically from one to the next term, I multiply by half, multiply by half again, and I multiply by half again, okay? And then I keep on doing it. I keep on doing it for an infinite amount of terms. However, there's actually a sum to that infinite amount of terms. The sum or the, the summation converges to a certain value, okay? And that value is two, using the formula that we have over here. And I just remember it, this thing is called Zeno's paradox, okay? Uh, briefly, briefly saying it's about a tortoise and, and, a, and a person running, right? And I think is when would the person catch up with the tortoise, okay? Each second passes, the, the person only catches half the distance, one-fourth the distance, one-eighth the distance. So, in theory, or the paradox is that he never really reaches the, the tortoise, okay? But never mind that. So that's the thing that's interesting about these geometric uh, progressions, is because that if r is less than 1, magnitude of r is less than 1, there is really a finite value, okay, that, that the, the series would tend to, okay, given infinitely amount of terms. Okay, Zeno's paradox. Last interesting thing to say. Last interesting story. I really want to excite my viewers about things that are interesting. Okay, now if you study high level mathematics, that's what we call the, the, the zeta function. Okay, I'm not sure whether is that how you write it. Okay, I, I apologize. Okay, if that's not the way, it's 1x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 over 3x all the way to 1 over nx. Okay, zeta's function. Okay, use for Riemann's hypothesis, which is left unproven, but let's just look at the function over here. Why am I writing this? The reason why I'm writing this is because for the problems, or at least when you do mathematics in the future, you really need to recognize which problems allow you to use arithmetic progressions and which problems allow you to use geometric progressions, and likewise the rules that follow them. When I look at this, you might be quick to think, hey, you know what, it's, it, I can maybe find a common ratio, okay, maybe the common ratio, I don't know, is half, multiply them, and then I get the terms and I sum them all up, and you might be tempted to quickly use like the sum of the, the, the geometric progression over here. But that's certainly not the case, because the terms that separate these two, if you notice, it's not a common ratio, okay? It's something different. It's 2 to the power of x, and then it's 3 to the power of x. Telling you this is because with the geometric progression and arithmetic progression the definitions, you can only solve a finite amount of problems. You can't exactly step into the world of sequences and series and solve all of them. You need more theory than that. Okay? The zeta function is just one that I just thought of, okay, that, that you know it is not a geometric progression. So basically you need to really recognize when I can use a geometric progression. And that is when the function defining the sequence is like that. Okay? First term A, common ratio R. Okay, and then you can use the definitions. But notice that you cannot use like geometric progressions for any sequences that you see or that you think is a geometric progression. Check carefully.
Okay, so there we go. Some interesting tidbits, some stories, and geometry progression for you.